Israeli-Palestinian Conflict Global Conflict Tracker. In early October 2023, war broke out between Israel and Hamas, the militant Islamist group that has controlled Gaza since 2006. Hamas fighters fired rockets into Israel and stormed southern Israeli cities and towns across the border of the Gaza Strip, killing and injuring hundreds of soldiers and civilians and taking dozens of hostages. The attack took Israel by surprise, though the state quickly mounted a deadly retaliatory operation. One day after the October 7 attack, the Israeli cabinet formally declared war against Hamas, followed by a directive from the defense minister to the Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, to carry out a complete siege of Gaza. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict dates back to the end of the 19th century. In 1947, the United Nations adopted Resolution 181, known as the Partition Plan, which sought to divide the British Mandate of Palestine into Arab and Jewish states. On May 14, 1948, the State of Israel was created, sparking the first Arab-Israeli War. The war ended in 1949 with Israel's victory, but 750,000 Palestinians were displaced, and the territory was divided into three parts. The State of Israel, the West Bank, of the Jordan River, and the Gaza Strip. Over the following years, tensions rose in the region, particularly between Israel and Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Following the 1956 Suez Crisis and Israel's invasion of the Sinai Peninsula, Egypt, Jordan, and Syria signed mutual defense pacts in anticipation of a possible mobilization of Israeli troops. In June 1967, following a series of maneuvers by Egyptian President Abdel Gamal Nasser, Israel preemptively attacked Egyptian and Syrian air forces, starting the Six-Day War. After the war, Israel gained territorial control over the Sinai Peninsula and Gaza Strip from Egypt the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, and the Golan Heights from Syria. Six years later, in what is referred to as the Yom Kippur War or the October War, Egypt and Syria launched a surprise two-front attack on Israel to regain their lost territory. The conflict did not result in significant gains for Egypt, Israel, or Syria, but Egyptian President Anwar al-Sadat declared the war a victory for Egypt as it allowed Egypt and Syria to negotiate over previously ceded territory. Finally, in 1979, following a series of ceasefires and peace negotiations, representatives from Egypt and Israel signed the Camp David Accords, a peace treaty that ended the 30-year conflict between Egypt and Israel. Even though the Camp David Accords improved relations between Israel and its neighbors, the question of Palestinians' self-determination and self-governance remained unresolved. In 1987, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians living in the West Bank and Gaza Strip rose up against the Israeli government in what is known as the First Intifada. The 1993 Oslo One Accords mediated the conflict, setting up a framework for the Palestinians to govern themselves in the West Bank and Gaza and enabled mutual recognition between the newly established Palestinian Authority and Israel's government. In 1995, the Oslo II Accords expanded on the first agreement, adding provisions that mandated the complete withdrawal of Israel from six cities and 450 towns in the West Bank. In 2000, sparked in part by Palestinian grievances over Israel's control over the West Bank, a stagnating peace process, and former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's visit to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam in September 2000, Palestinians launched the Second Intifada, which would last until 2005. In response, the Israeli government approved the construction of a barrier wall around the West Bank in 2002, despite opposition from the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court. Factionalism among the Palestinians flared up when Hamas won the Palestinian Authority's parliamentary elections in 2006, deposing longtime majority party Fatah. This gave Hamas, a political and militant movement inspired by the Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood, control of the Gaza Strip. Gaza is a small piece of land on the Mediterranean Sea that borders Egypt to the south and has been under the rule of the semi-autonomous Palestinian Authority since 1993. The United States and European Union, among others, did not acknowledge Hamas's electoral victory, as the group has been considered a terrorist organization by Western governments since the late 1990s. Following Hamas's seizure of control, violence broke out between Hamas and Fatah. Between 2006 and 2011, a series of failed peace talks and deadly confrontations culminated in an agreement to reconcile. 
In the summer of 2014, clashes in the Palestinian territories precipitated a military confrontation between the Israeli military and Hamas, in which Hamas fired nearly 3,000 rockets at Israel, and Israel retaliated with a major offensive in Gaza. The skirmish ended in late August 2014 with a ceasefire deal brokered by Egypt, but only after 73 Israelis and two 251 Palestinians were killed. After a wave of violence between Israelis and Palestinians in 2015, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas of Fatah announced that Palestinians would no longer be bound by the territorial divisions created by the Oslo Accords. In March and May of 2018, Palestinians in the Gaza Strip conducted weekly demonstrations at the border between the Gaza Strip and Israel. The final protest coincided with the 70th anniversary of the Nakba, the Palestinian exodus that accompanied Israeli independence. While most of the protesters were peaceful, some stormed the perimeter fence and threw rocks and other objects. According to the United Nations, 183 demonstrators were killed and more than 6,000 were wounded by live ammunition. The tense political atmosphere resulted in a return to disunity between Fatah and Hamas. With Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah party controlling the Palestinian Authority from the West Bank and Hamas de facto ruling the Gaza Strip. This remained largely true throughout the late 2010s and early 2020s, despite Abbas's efforts to bring the Palestinian people together under the Palestinian Authority. In May of 2018, fighting once again broke out between Hamas and the IDF in what became the worst period of violence since 2014. Before reaching a ceasefire, Militants in Gaza fired over 100 rockets into Israel. Israel responded with strikes on more than 50 targets in Gaza during the 24-hour flare-up. The Donald J. Trump administration set achieving an Israeli-Palestinian deal as a foreign policy priority. In 2018, the Trump administration canceled funding for the UN Relief and Works Agency, which provides aid to Palestinian refugees and relocated the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, a reversal of a long-standing U.S. policy. The decision to move the U.S. Embassy was met with applause from the Israeli leadership but was condemned by Palestinian leaders and others in the Middle East and Europe. Israel considers the complete and united Jerusalem its capital, while Palestinians claim PDF East Jerusalem as the capital of a future Palestinian state. In January 2020, the Trump administration released its long-awaited Peace to Prosperity plan, which was rejected by Palestinians due to its support for future Israeli annexation of settlements in the West Bank and control over an undivided Jerusalem. In August and September 2020, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and then Bahrain agreed to normalize relations with Israel, making them only the third and fourth countries in the region, following Egypt in 1979 and Jordan in 1994 to do so. The agreements named the Abraham Accords came more than 18 months after the United States hosted Israel and several Arab states for ministerial talks in Warsaw, Poland, about the future of peace in the Middle East. Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas of Fatah rejected the accords, as did Hamas. In October 2020, an Israeli court ruled that several Palestinian families living in Sheikh Jarrah, a neighborhood in East Jerusalem, were to be evicted by May 2021 with their land handed over to Jewish families. In February 2021, several Palestinian families from Sheikh Jarrah filed an appeal to the court ruling, prompting protests around the appeal hearings, the ongoing legal battle around property ownership, and the forcible displacement of Palestinians from their homes in Jerusalem. In late April 2021, Palestinians began demonstrating in the streets of Jerusalem to protest the pending evictions, and residents of Sheikh Jarrah, along with other activists, began to host nightly sit-ins. In early May, after a court ruled in favor of the evictions, the protests expanded, with Israeli police deploying force against demonstrators. On May 7th, following weeks of daily demonstrations and rising tensions between protesters, Israeli settlers, and police during the month of Ramadan, violence broke out at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem, with Israeli police using stun grenades, rubber bullets, and water cannons in a clash with protesters that left hundreds of Palestinians wounded. After the clashes in Jerusalem's Old City, tensions increased throughout East Jerusalem, compounded by the celebration of Jerusalem Day. On May 10th, after several consecutive days of violence throughout Jerusalem and the use of lethal and non-lethal force by Israeli police, Hamas, the militant group which governs Gaza and other Palestinian militant groups launched hundreds of rockets into Israeli territory. Israel responded with artillery bombardments and airstrikes, several of which killed more than 20 Palestinians against targets in Gaza. 
while claiming to target Hamas other militants, such as those from Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and their infrastructure, including tunnels and rocket launchers, Israel expanded its aerial campaign and struck non-military infrastructure, including residential buildings, media headquarters, and refugee and healthcare facilities. On May 21, 2021, Israel and Hamas agreed to a ceasefire brokered by Egypt with both sides claiming victory. More than 250 Palestinians were killed and nearly 2,000 others wounded, and at least 13 Israelis were killed over the 11 days of fighting. Authorities in Gaza estimate that tens of millions of dollars of damage was done, and the United Nations estimates that more than 72,000 Palestinians were displaced by the fighting. Following the outbreak of war between Israel and Hamas on October 7, 2023, President Joe Biden made a strong statement of support for Israel. On the same day that Israel declared war against the terrorist group, the United States announced that it would send renewed shipments of arms and move its Mediterranean sea warships closer to Israel. While the UN Security Council called an emergency meeting to discuss the renewed violence, the members failed to come to a consensus statement. Given the history of brutality when Israel and Palestinian extremist groups have fought in the past, international groups quickly expressed concern for the safety of civilians in Israel and the Palestinian territories, as well as those being held hostage by militants in Gaza. In the first two days of fighting, approximately 800 Israelis and 500 Palestinians were killed. Increasing loss of life is of primary concern in the conflict. Both airports were put out of service by the attacks, which some sources have linked to Israeli efforts to disrupt Iranian supply lines into the Levant region, Reuters. Israel secures Gaza border in south, masses troops for potential offensive. On Monday, President Joe Biden confirmed that 11 Americans are confirmed dead in the recent fighting between Israel and Hamas. It is possible that more U.S. nationals have been killed in the clashes, ABC. Palestinian Health Ministry, Israeli forces killed two Palestinians. The leaders of the United States and Israel met for the first time yesterday since Benjamin Netanyahu became Israeli Prime Minister last year. U.S. President Joe Biden urged Netanyahu to reach a compromise on his efforts to overhaul Israel's judiciary and improve conditions in the West Bank, AP. The offer is an effort to secure the Palestinian Authority's support for potential Saudi-Israeli normalization, the Wall Street Journal reported. Palestinian leaders criticized Gulf officials' establishment of diplomatic ties with Israel in 2020, WSJ. U.S.-Saudi Arabia make progress towards Saudi-Israeli normalization deal. The United States and Saudi Arabia reportedly agreed on broad tenets for a Saudi-Israeli normalization deal that would see Saudi Arabia distance itself from China in exchange for concessions to the Palestinians. But a U.S. National Security Council spokesperson said there was still no agreed-to framework, WSJ. The Palestinian ministry reported that two teenage boys had been shot and killed by security forces in confrontations with residents during unrest, Haaretz. Sign up for our newsletter.